Greetings, this is Professor Jeff Wilkerson at Luther College bringing you an introduction to exercise 21, Proper Motion of a Star, from Astronomers as Observers and Experimenters, published by Kendall Hunt. So this is looking at uh, the proper motion of Barnard's star, the star that shows the greatest proper motion across the sky, and you'll note that it's a pretty small proper motion. So let's think about proper motion just a little bit. We're, we're accustomed to thinking about the stars as fixed uh, relative to one another, the fixed stars on the sky, they're attached to the celestial sphere and the celestial sphere moves around us and we see them move across the sky, rise in the east and set in the west. Uh, but those stars are moving relative to one another just a little bit and we have a chance to try to, to get a sense of that right here. Uh, what we're talking about is, as you, so as you think about this exercise, first of all, just being reminded that the stars do move relative to one another, but that that motion is very small. Uh, we have to work hard to measure. That's one of the things that we could be trying to, to glean from this exercise, from the, this activity, is understanding that work. Uh, but it's also a very good exercise for uh, helping us with geometrical thinking and geometrical uh, reasoning. And that's pretty common throughout the exercises of this text. And this is another one right here. Uh, figure 21.2 is a really good figure for, for helping us think about what's going on right there, where you see that if you have a star moving uh, at, at some rate uh, in arc seconds per year or milli arc seconds per year or whatever you want to, whatever you want to measure that in, typically it would be milli arc seconds per year, um, that to have the same angle, suppose this is an observation over a fixed time, to have the same angle, uh, a star that's much further away has to be moving much more quickly. Uh, its physical velocity, v, has to be much quicker. And, and this is v that is transverse to our line of sight. Uh, radial velocity we have to get from Doppler shifts. And so we have plenty of exercises in the, the book that help us think about the Doppler shift and how we would measure radial velocity, what we would do with that radial velocity. So uh, this is de designed to help us think about this, this tangential velocity across here. And to say, um, okay, we're looking at this, so we need to know the distance. If we want to turn this in, into a, a, an actual physical space velocity, we need to know the distance to Barnard's star. And we can get that from parallax as, as you walk through in the, in the exercise right there. And the, it's best to think about this as an accidental or a random proper motion. Uh, true proper motion is, real, is really what we would think of that as, where these stars are just kind of because of accidents of the way they were born or the way they were kicked out of a system or whatever, uh, they happen to be moving local gravitational effects. They happen to be moving relative uh, to the solar system. This is as a point, this is as opposed to a sort of a global proper motion across the sky to say, if this is the galaxy, a top view of the galaxy, and we're here, when we look in this direction, uh, these stars are moving more quickly than we are. And if we look out this direction, these stars are moving more slowly than we are, um, at least in angular speed. Uh, with dark matter, uh, the actual physical speed is actually pretty, pretty constant across here. So the the, the motion through space, the velocity, the spatial velocity is pretty constant, but it's got a bigger circle, a bigger circumference to move around out here. So the angular speed is lower out here. And remember, proper motion is an angular speed that we're measuring in milli arc seconds per year or micro arc seconds per year or whatever that happens to be. And so uh, this is uh, to say uh, we should see these stars have a net flow moving this direction, and these stars have a net flow that looks like they're moving back this direction because we're catching up and passing, and these stars are catching up and passing us, and we're catching up and passing these stars out here. So certain directions in the sky will have streams uh, of flow. Now that stream, that, that, that stream of flow might be a challenge to measure because if all the stars are moving together, but they won't be moving together uh, because the stars that are near us, nearer us will appear to be moving um, uh, much more quickly because, uh, or much more slowly, excuse me, because they have a much bigger circle uh, to move. So the star that's right on top of us isn't moving very quickly at all. If we're 
uh, we're moving together through space. Due to, this is all due to orbital motion around the center of the galaxy. That's not what we're talking about in this exercise. We're talking about stuff, in addition to that, stuff that's random, stuff that's, that's moving uh, due to local effects. And so this is what you want to go in. You want to try to measure uh, that motion for Barnard star and turn it into a physical space velocity uh, for the star and to think your way through what we can do with that and, and to think about the geometries that are involved. So there's a lot of good geometrical thinking that you can do uh, with this exercise and, and it, it, it's a good one to do. So, so that's all I got in terms of the introduction for this exercise for you. Um, I, I, I hope you find it interesting. I hope you find it valuable to do this kind of work. If you have any questions about it, as always, please feel free to contact me and good luck with it.